I've got this big awesome new shop and I need to make some Christmas ornaments, but I'm still unpacking stuff so all my tools are buried. Lucky for me, NEJE sent me this new laser cutter engraver. I've never used a laser cutter before, so we're gonna see what it's like for a newbie to use a tool like this. And speaking of unpacking stuff, I've got a pretty decent amount of scrap wood around here, so my goal is to use nothing but scraps for these ornaments. This is the Master 2S Max, NEJE's biggest machine, so it takes up a decent amount of space, but at least it's not buried. stopped this early because I had to run, but this went great for a first try, I think. The app worked just fine and was actually neat to be able to adjust things in real time, like jacking up the laser power. But it's clear the app is just for quick stuff, so I'm just gonna keep moving on in the laser world. First, I'll install this air assist kit, which attaches to an air compressor to help blow smoke and burnt material away from what you're lasering. Tin C33 has a great video about how to set this up, including some 3D printed parts he designed. And with that buttoned up, I'm gonna jump straight into Lightburn, which lets you do all sorts of stuff. I watched an hour long video from James Dean Designs on this, so I'm pretty much an expert now. I was wondering about that. I put the air nozzle coming off the left side because that was easier for running plugs and stuff. But that's where it homes to, so that's, that's a problem. I see now, that's why they stick it on the right. Okay, I'll switch it. All right, let's try this again. Okay. We're back. It's about an hour later maybe. I had some trouble connecting the light burn for the first time. When you use that firmware updater, pick the one on the left. Don't go for that fancy two megabytes a second one. Anyway. Oh, okay. There we go. What am I doing? Okay, I have no idea if this is gonna work. Let's just go. That's not burning very much. Let's up the power. Oh crap. You know what I didn't do? Focus it. One moment. There we go. First up, we're gonna make some Transformers ornaments. My son is really into transforming stuff right now, so this is a natural place to start. So well, that was three passes at 100%, and you can see it didn't cut all the way through. This wasn't pointed right at the laser the whole time, but still promising. I'll go clean this up, I'll be right back. If I didn't show you the back, that'd look like a 100% success, but had some splitting. 
This is still a win. I mean, that looks pretty awesome. Sweet. The ribbon hole fell right out. I switched to five passes and I had the air better pointing at the laser. I just slathered a bunch of hot glue on both the nozzle and on the tube up here to keep it in place. And that seems to have helped. Before we move on to new things, we got one more Transformers experiment. This time with painter's tape on the front and the back to try to prevent singeing. We're gonna see if the engraving will make it through. And we're gonna try six passes instead of five to see if we can get that clean cut. You can see it didn't burn all the way through the tape. I might try running it again, see what happens. Still isn't really burning through, I don't think. You would. All right, well, I totally screwed that up and lost my settings, so let's just take the tape off and see what it looks like. Didn't burn through at all. And did it cut? So six passes with tape definitely wasn't enough. It did protect it though from getting any burn marks or anything on the back. I guess we'll just leave the tape off the top and we're, we're gonna try it again on the back, but we're gonna move on to a new project. And for that next project, let's try a photo for an ornament. I'm gonna pick a photo of someone who I admire and that's Octavia E. Butler. She was an amazing sci-fi author and if you like fiction at all, you really should read her novel Kindred. Such a good book. Well, this looks no better in real life than it does on camera. It's really light, I'm surprised. I'm gonna bump up the power and just try running over the same thing again. Well, that looks a lot better. A little more polish, I think we'll get there. I'm gonna call that a win for now, though. But how is the uh, burn through for the cutout? Well, we'll try another pass. That was almost pain free. You might be wondering about ventilation. How bad is the smoke from this? Well, it's way less smoky than I thought it would be, but it's enough to irritate your lungs and stuff. So, I've got a door open, got my mask on. Ideal state, you're gonna wanna plan on having a vent tube out of your house or through an air filter or something like that. You're definitely not gonna wanna run a laser cutter in your house without some sort of plan for this. For this next ornament, we're just gonna try a fancy cut. I've got the tape on it because we're not doing any engraving, so this really should only help protect against singeing. Well, my hose popped off. And we're gonna do eight passes. I just really wanna see this thing have a clean cut. Oh no, dang it. All right, the tape's off. It looks awesome. This part broke off as you saw. I'll be able to glue it back on. But I think it is highlighting the fact that this little Harbor Freight air compressor isn't enough, probably. It really shouldn't take eight passes to make these cuts and not have the whole nine yards just be perfect, I wouldn't think. So that's definitely a conclusion here. Just plan on having a regular sized air compressor, not one of these little minis. Huge twist. Remember when I said I couldn't find the parts to be able to hook up a regular sized air compressor? The 17th pass around the shop was the charm. So now I've got the tube hooked up into this nozzle adapter thing. I'm just gonna clamp the handle going and then that runs to my air compressor and I'll set it to the right pressure from there. So that means one more test. And I guess that means I should take my passes back down. Let's start back at five. That took about an hour. Let's see how this turned out. Oh, must be the tape. Maybe the tape is stopping airflow or something. So this time, instead of messing around with the tape at all, I'm gonna try propping the board up so that there's room for the air and everything to escape underneath it. You can buy a commercial version of this for laser cutters. It looks like a honeycomb pattern, but I don't have it. Couldn't find anything like it, so these aluminum bars I have to do. And it looks like they work pretty well. Oh, 
Oh, look at that. So you don't want a solid surface underneath, turns out, but you do want something because this is what happens when the piece falls down and then it gets lasered. Just a little blemish, not the end of the world. Backs look good too. Man, I was just barking up the wrong tree with the tape stuff. Maybe except for the front. It, I could have done tape on the front and that would have burned through okay and the back is fine. Okay, well that's good to know. All right, conclusion time. What's it like using a cheap laser cutter for the first time? I thought this was fun. What you get out of it, it just seemed so cool. There's some severely easy wins available with basic art. Even though the photo engraving was tricky, there's a, so much potential there. Light burn was fun to use. I think if I was somebody thinking about getting one of these machines, especially versus far more expensive CO2 lasers, I would get that honeycomb, get the air assist. You need a full size air compressor. And if you're like me, you're gonna wanna prioritize building an enclosure because it is a little nerve wracking having that laser blasting around, even though the glasses should keep you safe and the enclosure would also help handle the smoke and that's pretty much it have fun good luck thanks for watching